Hey guys, let's get this show on the road, hey? There's been a lot of questions on how to set up the DJI FPV.WTF OSD with iNav and how to enable the sneaky FPV fonts. Also, there's been a few questions around the iNav refresh uh, settings and what to do to fix that, how to save your OSD and how to overlay the OSD on your DVR footage. So in this video, I want to cover how to set up iNav how to route your air unit and goggles, what packages to use, as well as the settings in those packages, how to set up the sneaky FPV or any other font pack to use as an OSD, and how to overlay the OSD on your DVR. Let's get cracking. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is understand about our firmware on both the goggles and the DJI E units. Um, to do that, let's go to our first website that we'll be using mostly for uh, doing the work on our both our E unit and goggles. So if we open up a web browser and we go to fpv.wtf, you will find this nice looking web page that has a link to most things that you'll want within uh, this tutorial. So to understand about your firmware and what is supported and what it is not, click on the wiki and on the right hand side scroll down to the supported firmware version link. Clicking on this, uh, the information here may be updated um, over time as different firmware compatibility becomes understood um, or different workarounds are created for each of the firmwares. At the moment, the firmware that is the latest supported one as per this website is 1.00.0606. Now, when we open up our uh, DJI Assistant and we're hooked up to our goggles or our air unit, at the moment I'm hooked up to my air unit, you'll see that I'm on the currently on this version of the firmware. And the latest version is this. At the moment, I'm not going to be updating to this because I do not need to. Um, the latest version has support for some of the newer cameras, so I don't know at this point in time what is going to be successful for you and not, but just for the purposes of this, I'm on the 06 firmware. Okay, so let's close the wiki down. The first thing that we want to do is understand that our computer is connected to our uh, air unit or our goggles. Now to do that, um, we need to open up our device manager on our computer. And we need to, uh, we need to go down to our ports and observe what happens when we connect and disconnect our USB that is connected to the air unit or goggles. So mine is connected right now, and you'll notice when I pull the plug, it updates, and you'll see that COM3 has disappeared. Then when I plug it back in, noting that my air unit is also powered, as you'd expect when you're upgrading your firmware or connecting to the DJI Assistant, you'll see that we have USB COM3 has been connected. So we know that COM3 is the COM port that is connected to, a, in this case, the air unit. So I will shift this across so you can see what happens as we're going through the routing process. So the first thing we're going to be doing is routing the, global, uh, routing the air unit, which all that does is pretty much opens the door to allow us to make other changes to the air unit. And those changes will be done in subsequent steps but the first one is to root which 
uh, allows us the keys to open the door to do other things to our e-units. So I will click on root and I, as advised, I am cooling my e-unit. In this case, I have a full size air unit, but in all the processes that I've done, I have cooled both the air unit full size and the smaller air, the CADEX unit. Clicking on root device, you'll see that our air unit USB connected COM port 3, as we saw in the device manager, is listed here. All that we need to do is click on it, connect, and it will go through the following steps in an attempt to apply the route to the air unit. This particular air unit that I'm doing now is a brand new one in terms of it has not been routed before, so this is a virgin air unit, so to speak. And you'll notice that as it's going through these steps, you'll see that it will be restarted. And when it gets restarted, you'll see it drops off the device manager and comes back. So now up to step two, and we'll just let this cycle through. Note that you may have to use the scroll bars at the side when it gets past step four, because it's sort of hidden at the bottom of the page and uh, it can be a bit tricky if you're expecting to see it scroll up automatically. It doesn't, it just continues down the, through underneath the page. Also noting here that there is a identifier for the air unit. Yours may be different or the goggles may be different depending on what air unit you're using. And it also note the firmware version. Sometimes you'll also see a Google Ana Analytics thing here. You can just click the accept um, and that gets rid of it. As you can see here, and I'm, if I don't scroll down, you see the scroll bar is now there. And if I scroll down now, you can see that the device has been successfully routed. It's available. Still, it's come back after its last reboot and is available to the configurator, which is what this website will call for the purpose of this discussion, is the configurator. So clicking on the hamburger, we'll go back home and we can now connect our device and you'll see that we have the DJI FPV air unit now listed and not via the COM port because it knows that it is an FPV air unit from the configurator's point of view that we are connecting to and doing further activities on. If we connect, So this demonstrates uh, something that is a not necessarily an issue, but something to be aware of is that if you have this configurator on your computer opened up uh, on another web page, another browser, etc., you will find that the connection will not work because there is another web page or another application keeping control of the COM port for you to successfully do something with, even though we are connected. So I know that I have on another web page, potentially a connection to uh, the air unit. And as you can see, it actually come up on another web page uh, because I had it open in another screen. 
that it is there, it is connected, and we can do further activities on this. So what I'm going to do is close this one down and ensure that I don't have anything hiding in another web page somewhere else. And just double check. So if I attempt the connection again, we can see that we are connected now. So some people will be attempting to do the connection after routing and finding that it's not connecting, or if you are doing this in subsequent um, times where you're configuring things, it is a, a trap that um, can get you a little bit muddled up if you're not aware of other web pages that are open with this website. Okay. Now that we are here um, and we're at home, you notice that we don't longer have a root enabled because we've already performed that activity and now we can do other uh, actions for this particular air unit. So the first thing that we're going to do after routing is install the WTF operating system. And this will enable us to utilize the packages that we can use for OSD and other activities with the air unit and or goggles. So I'm going to apply the WTF uh, operating system. It's clicking on it and it is simply an install. We're installing the operating system. And you'll see that it will take some minutes to come through here. So just let that proceed. I'll let this run um, in real time so you can see how long this process takes. As far as temperature of the air unit goes, um, I've seen it up until the mid to high 70 degrees before it shuts down or goes into a low power mode. Um, you'll see here it's a constant 48 degrees. I have a 12 volt fan, pretty much like a small one that you would put in a, um, in a small enclosure, um, just blowing directly on the unit to keep it cool. So by performing the route and installing WTF OS on the air unit, it doesn't stop it operating as you'd expect a normal DJI unit to operate. Um, even with the goggles routed and using a Virgin air unit, it still operates at what, as it was before and the same way, the other way around, a Virgin goggles and a routed air unit. Um, it will still operate as it was prior to um, routing. It is no different in terms of its operation. So that install process is now completed, as you see. And if we go back to our home screen, we will have a number of other options that are available to us. So we have um, we have some port here, which will take you to the Discord. Um, that you can use the different channels within the Discord to ask questions if you require support, etc. Um, we have the About, we have the Wiki, which is uh, full of very useful information. CLI, which we'll be using later to run um, specific commands, and our Package Manager. So our Package Manager will load up a number of different options that we can install 
um, that we'll make use of. So this is anything that's in the red has been installed as part of the WTF operating system. The one that we are most interested in from an OSD perspective is the MSP OSD. So all that we need to do to, uh, to install this, obviously is click the install and wait for it to go through its process and come back as installed. Okay, it is now installed. The other one that uh, most people will want to do also is the FCC unlock, uh, which is negates the need for using the text file on the SD card. By installing this, you don't have to do that and it permanently, permanently is probably the wrong word, but for the life of when the WTF is installed and this package is installed on the air unit, you will find that you no longer need to have that text file. So we'll install that too. Okay, so for this air unit at the moment, it will operate as we would expect um, it to operate as a DGI air unit. The next part, uh, we'll come back to this air unit um, so that we can sh demonstrate how to set up. Uh, actually, let's do that now. Uh, we want to go back to homepage and go to the CLI. And there are a number of settings in here that we will want to input in to um, enable us to fix the refresh issue with INAV. What we'll do now is we'll actually go back to um, and we'll put our settings in actually. Um, that will enable uh, fixing of the refresh issue on INAV. So the, the way the CLI works is you have a set of commands to put in and uh, they also within the same command set particular parameters to different values in a similar way you expect out of the INAV configurator. Um, but it, it is in, uh, to be careful to put into the whole, put in the whole command as you see it on the screen. Um, and there are two commands to put in. The second one is a command that actually, or it essentially saves uh, the settings that we're putting in. So the first one, is this so the command is structured the package config so it tells us we're configuring the the msd msp osd package we're applying a set on the package and we're putting a parameter in and a value for that parameter so this is to be applied or press enter when you've completed that and the next command that we put in will save the above line. It is package command applying the settings we've just put in to the MSP OSD. So that's applied those changes and has restarted the air unit. Or at least restarted the operating environment on the air unit. It is not power cycle the air unit, which is why we're not seeing it drop off the USB port. So that's all that we need to do at the moment for the air unit. The air unit is now ready 
to be powered down and we will now get on to our goggles. Okay, moving on to the goggles. So you can see I've got the DJI system up and the goggles are there. We're actually on COM14 with the goggles. And you'll notice that I'm on 0606 firmware. Same as the FBB uh, E unit. Get out of there and let's move across to WTF FPV. FPV.WTF configurator. Now you'll notice that um, I'm immediately connected, and this is because I've already routed my goggles and installed all the things I need to install. But sometimes you find yourself in a situation where something just stuffs up along the way and you have to reinstall your WTF OS, etc. Uh, you can actually can actually reroute because once you've routed them, um, there is Essentially, it's permanent because of the way that DJI has set up some flags um, within their operating environment on the goggles and on the E unit. But it, it, when you uninstall everything, if you want to get back to as close as vanilla as you can, it's pretty much as close as you'll get. Um, although at the moment, DJI haven't blocked anyone from updating firmwares. Um, and also once you root, you can update firmwares um, and the goggles remain rooted. Uh, they haven't circumvented the ability to do this as yet. So uh, if you find yourself in a situation where you need to reinstall WTF OS, um, you can do so. Um, to get to this point um, on the goggles, you'll follow the same uh, the same instructions that I've given you for the uh, air unit. You'll connect it up. You'll go to WTF, FPV.WTF. You won't have a connection here to the goggles. You click on route. You'll select the device that comes up in the pop-up window. Um, and it will probably be the COM port. Um, or it might be called something called Pigeon or something like that and you apply the route and then you can come back to the home page through the uh, hamburger and then proceed to WTF and install uh, the WTF operating system. So in this example here we're going to remove it um, so that you can see how that process happens if you need to reinstall the WTF OS. So it really is as simple. Um, you can hear that I've got my uh, goggles turned on. Let me just disconnect the fan on the on the air unit because I had it turned on for a little bit and it was getting warm so I'll just unplug that now that's cooled down. So the goggles are on. Um, the air unit is turned off. Uh, important that we don't have a connection to the goggles from an air unit when we're doing um, the next number of processes to reinstall the WTF OS. Otherwise, you'll have potentially have some issues. So, clicking on remove, remove WTF OS, it will do its thing and it will reboot, it will drop off, and it will come back again. Just wait for a uh, Windows to accept it. And we're back. Now, we're back here. You can see if you were noticing or your keen eye before, we had a package manager available and we had startup available. But because we've removed the WTF OS, these things are also removed um, from and, and uh, disabled. So we're back to a rooted device without WTF installed. So we're going to install the WTF OS and we're going to click on install and install. So 
So you can see it goes through a similar process as we observed with the air unit. It'll take a number of minutes to do this. You'll notice that you know, our uh, identifier for the goggles in particular, in particular is this device here. It'll be different to the air unit and depending on the air unit type, you'll see that also be different. Okay, we're now rebooting and connecting and we should see the goggles pop up when it's done its sorting itself out. Up on the COM port. Goggles are here. Install WTF is, OS is grayed out because we've just installed it. And we go back to our home page. We now have all these options enabled. We still can get to the wiki and support if we want to go to the Discord channel and uh, or the Discord channels and ask questions if we need to. So now for the goggles in particular, we'll go into the package manager. And in the same way, we're going to enable some packages here for us to see the OSD and uh, some other things that we would want to do. Um, so the first thing is do the FCC unlock, assuming that uh, you're in a zone or a region that this is not going to be a problem for you. So that package is now installed. There's no need to do fan control because the DJI system already automatically handles the fan control. If you install this and you keep your fan down low for a reason unbeknownst to anyone else but yourself, uh, you might find that you overheat the goggles. So leave it off, uninstall DJI operating system on the goggles, even though you've rooted it and installed WTF OS, uh, manage its own heat. So don't bother with the fan control. So there's some other packages you may want to install, auto record, which is the same way that when it gets connection to your drone or your plane or the air, well, the air unit in particular, it will start um, a recording at that point. I don't bother with that. I'm happy to do that on the goggles by pressing the record button myself. AVN mods, um, there's some stuff in there with regards to the different versions of goggles that you have, um, I think, but essentially for those that use the AV input with a analog um, module on the side of your goggles, you can set some things so it doesn't black out on you when it loses connection or drops the connection. Um, it's a, I haven't used it, um, but you can experiment with that. The thing that we're really most interested in is the MSP OSD. And you'll notice that the current version is 072 for MSP OSD on the goggles. Uh, as of recording this um, on the 15th of October, the, it is slightly different to the air unit version. That's because of some iterations that were done to bug fix some issues that were found um, after 070 was released. So don't be concerned that the two versions are out of sync. 
the highest version on the air unit as of today is 070 and the highest version on the goggles is 072. So we're going to go ahead and install that. Okay, so the advice, generally speaking, is to only install the stuff that you really need. Don't just go install everything because you think you need it, um, because you start to bog down the operating environment on the goggles or the air unit, um, chewing up CPU cycles or processing cycles on those that you don't necessarily need to be chewing up unless you're going to sure you're going to be using the features that you're installing. So we've got MSP OSD installed um, above the standard and the FCC unlock because we want to ensure that we don't have to put the text file on the SD card to enable these features. So essentially uh, that is done. Now from the goggles perspective, we need to look at how we go about doing the OSD recording and how we go about uh, applying that over a DVR. So let's look at the OSD recording. So we're going to now go back up to the top and move across to the CLI. Okay, now that we're in the CLI, we're going to uh, input some more settings as we did with the goggles, but these are different. So this setting here at the time of the current firmware versions that I alluded to before um, needs to be enabled to be uh, turned on for recording of DVR. So we're going to put this full command in and we'll press enter. And then again to save the settings that we've just put in, we're going to do the apply and press enter. Simple as that. The OS has restarted itself within the goggles or the package has restarted itself. So uh, the other thing that we can do also is uh, retrieve the settings that are on the goggles or the air unit depending on what's plugged in at the time just by doing a simple get so we can see all the different settings that are available and what is being saved onto the goggles or air unit the fake HD stuff here is in reference to how Betaflight rearranges the OSD uh, because of the screen uh, OSD positioning that it's available in the current version of Betaflight. This is a workaround that enables people to apply it, the OSD to areas outside that standard OSD area that Betaflight provides. Uh, you can see here that the setting we just put in, record or REC enabled here, we can see the value as saved in the MSP OSD package equals true. That's what we've told it to put in and it is indeed true. The other thing you may wish to do at this point is the there are two things that come up in your goggles now that you've applied the MSP OSD package and you'll notice that there is a message down the bottom that says awaiting OSD or OSD waiting, one of the two. Um, this setting here enables and disables that. Personally, I like it there because I know that the MSD OSD is loading up or at least it's doing something. Uh, I leave that to true. You can certainly turn it to false if you would like. And the, the way that you would do that is to put in the package config, followed by a set, followed by MSP OSD, followed by show waiting, space, 
true. Don't do equals in commas true the way that the right syntax is as you see it up here. The other thing that is extremely handy, uh, particularly for people that utilize a GPS system, is to show the AU data. And what this means is it's showing you both the temperature of the air unit and the voltage that the air unit is receiving. And that's displayed in your goggles in a static location on the right hand side. Um, so you can always see the, the temperature of the air unit so that you know when you're, when you're waiting, particularly sitting with a, uh, on the ground with a GPS waiting for to get a GPS lock, you can keep your eye on the temperature if you need to. Okay, so we're going to change the show AU data to be true because we want that displayed in the goggles. At the moment, the default on this particular version of the firmware or the MSP, not the firmware, but the MSP OSD package is for that to be turned off. I'm going to turn it on because I like to have that information. I think it's very handy. So all I'm going to do is try that again. I'll just copy this. I will paste it there and I'm going to show AU data. Show AU data true. Now, when I go back and get the settings again, you'll see that that is indeed now set to true. So that is all that we need to do at the moment for the goggles. I think, unless we'll come back to it in a minute, I think that is all that we need. So we're now rooted. We've installed the operating system. We've gone to the package manager, we've installed the stuff that we need to to ensure that we have the uh, the refresh issue with INAV sorted. We've got OSD recording turned on and I'll demonstrate that essentially from a um, I'll do a sample recording that you can see within the air unit and the goggles and I'll show you the OSD uh, file that is, that is saved onto the um, SD card and I'll also show you about the uh, sneaky FPV font pack. All right. Okay, so at this stage, we can disconnect the goggles. We can um, essentially shut them down for now. Disconnect them from the USB. We no longer need to be on this website for now, but we'll leave it. We'll leave it open. Um, I'm going to fire up another website. page and we're going to do go to where we find the sneaky FBV fonts this link will be in the description okay so it's a google drive three different types of osds uh, for different firmwares the reason for that is that the way the the font file is addressed and all the little pieces of the font are taken out of the font file. The locations for those different bits are different between RGPlane or RGPilot, Betaflight and iNav. So we need specific font files uh, for those different firmwares. So I'm going to plug in a SD card. I'll find it on my system. Okay. 
it seems it's not liking me at the moment. Let's try it again. That's better. So we have a blank SD card. It is my E drive on the computer. Empty. So all that we're going to do is go to the iNav. And 1.7 is the latest that I have designed up. The there's 1.6 there, it's got a little bit of a little bit different fonts or different little glyphs in it that some people might find of more interest, but uh, personally, the 1.7, in my opinion, is uh, the best. Okay, it wants to do... Okay, anyway. We have the files... If I knew how to operate a computer, let me grab them from the download. Anyway, the the instruction is to grab the downloaded zip and unzip it or extract it to the root of your SD card. Let me just find where it's downloaded. Okay, worked it out. Let's just go to, this is an Edge browser, so you're a little bit different on Google Chrome. Um, I'm just using Edge because it's clean and doesn't have all my bookmarks displayed everywhere. Uh, I'm just going to go down to downloads and open the file. In this case, it's actually grabbed the directory for some strange reason. Um, and going to the zip file, and I'm going to grab these and I'm going to put them onto the root of the USB drive. There they are. Four files saved in there. That's all we need. So if we were to be using this with another firmware, uh, the WTF OS system knows that we're flying with iNav and, and it's based on the naming of the font files. Uh, if we were flying beta flight, this iNav would become BF. And I think if we're flying Arduplane or Arduplilot, this INAB would become Ardu. That means that you can then have multiple fonts suited to the firmware you're using because the way the fonts are addressed in the files, it differs and it doesn't stuff up your OSD. There is no unified format for OSD in terms of the font files, so this is how we deal with it. Okay, so these are on USB drive. Nothing more that we need to do with that. I'm going to pause right now so I can simply do a recording of, um, or a very quick recording. Actually, what I might do before that is go into beta flight, sorry, go into iNav, and have a look at the settings that we have in iNav, um, so that you can know that you've got the right things set up in the right tabs. Okay, so we are connected to COM13 on INAV. We have a, in this case, a mini rack, and uh, we're on, we are on, let me disconnect and I will connect again 
run INAV version 5.1. And we're running on a uh, Matec Expo 405 wing flight controller. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is go down to our ports tab. And this particular craft was set up previously for DJI, but prior to the MSP OSD development work, um, if I still selected the DJI FPV VTX and on the goggles, uh, I would still see it as I had set up before in the OSD with how I set it up in the OSD in the goggles. So it would have these, these elements in there, uh, etc. So going back to the outputs, sorry, the, the ports. We will need to change the currently set peripheral that your air unit is connected to and we need to change it to HD0 VTX. In future versions of the configurator, uh, there is developments in there that will identify the WTF OS in this list, but at the moment, the correct setting is HD0 VTX. Save and reboot. Okay, HD0. Moving over to the OSD. What we need to do in here is we need to select HD and you'll notice that it gives us a widescreen. Noting that these red lines here will be largely the extent of where you can place your OSD elements on the screen. Uh, there also is some developments coming in the future configurator release as well as firmware for INAV that will enable you to place the OSD elements out to the edges of the screen. You may have seen a video that I've posted online of that being demonstrated. There's been a lot of questions about that, but at the moment, this is a uh, purpose-built firmware and a purpose-built configurator that I had uh, that has not been released uh, that enables this functionality. At the moment, if you stay within these red lines, you will have the OSD on your screen within uh, those lines. So what I'm going to do is simply just disable most of this just for the purposes of this. I'll enable stuff when I get to it. So you can observe what we're doing. So let's start with, um, we no longer need the DJI stuff, so that's turned off. Um, nothing else needs to be enabled. We can turn on the HD. We can, let's try with something. Um, so RSSI, we'll pop that up here. We'll put in the AHI. Artificial horizon. And we will put in the sidebars. What else? Uh, let's put in an altitude. And pop it up up here. Uh, obviously enable what you want to enable. Um, let's do some on time. And let's do some fly time. And GPS. Let's go through the speed and 
we use longitude and latitude and we'll pop them down here okay uh probably battery battery cell voltage let's go throttle battery voltage and probably amps why not find it let's put it in the fire mode Uh, we'll figure it out later. Let's just leave it as that. Okay. We don't need to do anything with the font manager in iNav. We don't touch that. They're ignored um, from a font perspective within iNav's screens. So all we need to do is save it. That's all. Okay, so I am going to do a re quick recording and I'll come back. Give me a moment. Okay, so I'm back. So all that I have done is remove the SD card from the computer, plugged it into the goggles, started the goggles, powered the goggles on after the SD card has gone in. What happens then is the goggles start up they look for the font file there are four font files that are needed uh, well technically not all of them are needed depends on the resolution of your screen and it starts up and when you look at the OSD you'll notice that it's now high def um, and I'll render what we've recorded here so you can actually see what the goggles are seeing in terms of the OSD so if I go into DCIM and you'll see that here is the DGI DBR recording. Um, if I open this up, and this is essentially what you see. So if you've got a flight video, it'll be exactly the same way. Uh, v or C, you can get rid of the, the subtitles um, because that what is displayed in the information down there is what's in the SRT file. Sub subtitles file essentially um, and you'll notice that we have an OSD file here that is now also being recorded so what we're going to do is take both of those files and the font files and use those six files in conjunction to record the OSD on top of the DBR file. So what that enable, what that ends up being is that we can keep our DBR clean. We don't have to have an OSD on it. Um, and the output file is a secondary file that includes the OSD on top of it. So let's go ahead and do that. So the at the moment, there is a website that is available uh, and it may move over time when I find the website. So it looks very similar to the configurator for that we we're using before, but this is a development version of it that includes the ability to do an OSD overlay. So it will probably be eventually incorporated into the main configurator. At the moment, there'll be a link in the description to this website that at the moment is the ability to overlay. So what we are going to do is the output file will actually end up on the same location as what we've recorded the DVR onto. 
uh, or where we've restored it. So I don't want it to put it back onto the SD card. Um, so what I want to do is simply create a location that I can put this on um, that is not on that drive. So let me just create something very quickly to do so. Okay, so this is where I'm going to place everything. So all I need to take is the two files, OSD and the DVR, not this SRT. Don't get confused. You'll also note that this OSD is the same naming as the DVR. So as the DVR goes up to number one or number 300 or whatever, the OSD will align in its naming convention. Here's the two files. Uh, what I'll do is also grab the font files because they're needed as part of this and it's just easier to load off a hard drive than it is the SD card. So this is finished with this. We can close this down. Don't need the USB anymore. So moving back to this website here, We then go to the OSD overlay and we choose our DVR file. We open that up and choose our OSD file. We open, we open that up. We choose the four font files. We open those up and we hit convert. So let's wait for that to finish. And then we can download. And we have our DGI file with the OSD overlaid on it. If I open that up, and it won't let me open up for some reason. Let me go to where it's located and then open it up. All right, it is running over here. So there it is overlaid with the fonts that we've input in. I'll pause this. We'll go back to iNav. And you'll see that this is as positioned on the iNav screen with the elements. So we've got voltages, got latitude and longitude, we've got on time, etc. So there it is. I don't know if there's anything more I can say. I uh, hope you have found this tutorial useful. Um, I know that there's been a lot of questions about this and I've thought long about how to structure it in a way. Um, and now we have all of the tools that enable us to do this. Uh, so get out, fly, make some videos and drop some comments in um, with some links. Let me know how you went. Happy flying.